Hi folks, welcome back to the Nightmare Cabin. It's been a quite a few days, I know, but um, stuff is coming out. Um, Maiden Cast is back tomorrow. I'll be doing a new reviewing a new Evil album when it does turn up in the post eventually. Um, and I'll be doing Alas as well, carrying on with the Morbid Angel, Eric Rutan series. But tonight, we're going to be talking about a very special band. Um, they only ever did one album, or one album so far. Back in 1992, this is Black Phone with the Rotten Ways of Human Misery. I've wanted to talk about this album for a while, actually. But uh, just coming to post today is a uh, cassette edition with a few other bits and bobs. Um, so I waited for that to do the unboxing. I pre-ordered it around Christmas time, I believe. Um, so yeah, Black Phone are from uh, Mexico. And, yeah, The Rotten Ways of Human Misery was released in 1992. Produced by Eric Mayer from Dark Angel. And he also did a couple of guest solos as well. Um, I think it was a death metal page that I just saw. It might have been a, a YouTube video. Someone shared it. But, yeah, I saw that front cover and straight away just knew that, yeah, this is going to kick ass. And, uh, yeah, picture of the band there. And... Got a um, and ha how do you describe it? Well, they're death metal, but still, where I spoke in the past of like thrash metal just verging into death metal, it's kind of of that era. But this is sort of death metal, but one foot still in thrash metal, rather than they've sort of made the leap. But there's a few thrashier tendencies in it, uh, especially when it comes to the solos. But yeah, it's definitely a, a they've definitely passed on onto that death metal realm um think leave scars era dark angel meets leprosy era death which is quite possibly the best sentence anyone's ever said um so yeah the ferocity and that just that raw energy from leprosy those evil sounding riffs with the sort of freshy chaos but with a, a bit, those melodic solos as well from Leave Scars. But then, just to ch just to throw in the mix as well, nice, slow, doomy sections a la obituary. So sort of cause of death era obituary. So where um, it will just go really slow with like a nice melodic solo. And then not a lot, but when they, they do as well, They'll chuck in, during those slow, doomier sections, they'll be backed by keyboards on songs such as, like, Gangrene. I think, uh, what was the other one? The fourth track. I can't read this one. Uh, Criminal Ecstasy. So, um, yeah. So, think nice, freshy, awesome riffs. Scorching vocals, by the way. Real raspy, raw-sounding vocals by... Um, Paul John Mallory, who's sadly no longer longer with us, um, and yeah, just just at the right m time, they just slow things down right nicely, and then with a nice bit of keyboards backed up, and that's not often, but when it does happen, it's really effective and really cool. But mostly, it's it's a shredder. It's nice and fast, nice you know, awesome riffing, and yeah, I've said it already, but bears repeating. Take Leprosy by Death, Leave Scars by Dark Angel, and then Calls of Death by Obituary. Mix it all together. Sprinkle a bit of keyboards in here and there, just for added effect. And you've got this kick-ass album. Um, yeah, and and that album cover just says it all, doesn't it? That's just awesome. And yeah, it's just a really, it's just a really good album. It's not the most original, I will admit, but the way it's executed, the way it's played, the way it's produced, it's just a solid release. It's just a really good album and just, it's just done right. It doesn't need to be. It wasn't really changing the wheel, but reinventing the wheel, but they did their, their part with it. They uh, put their own little stamp on things. So it turns out I wasn't the only one that picked up on the album. It seemed to have got a renewed, um, lease of life as years have gone by uh, with the reissue culture just going in metal and I think with all these uh, different groups and different YouTubers and whatnot, everyone's sharing everything and people are discovering a lot of stuff they missed before you know especially if you're you know 
a bit younger and you're working your way back. But uh, funny enough, when I <coughs> when I first listened to this, I actually messaged, I found, I tracked down the band's Facebook page and um, messaged them, and it was the guitarist that uh, got back to me, and it was actually him that I bought this off. Uh, it didn't, yeah, it just sent the inlay card and the back tray and all the rest of it. There was, it wasn't actually in a case, but. Uh, it was a really good price as well because everywhere I saw it for sale was it was up for a fortune and he had a couple of spare copies, so that was really cool. Uh, but yeah, it got reissued back in this is on Chaos Records in 2016. Uh, you got this card with it, which I think is really cool, and you got new artwork. I do prefer the original one, I'm not going to lie, but it's worth picking these things up for the. Uh, if you're going to get anything, you might as well yeah, stick it there. Um, it was worth picking up as well for things like that, because that original version I got was quite bare bones, but let's see, they, they uh, played with Devastation and Malevolent Creation at the time, Samuel, Nuclear Assault and Deicide, Sick of It All. I don't think that was like an old day that they played there. Um, Cenotaph, Obituary. They certainly did the rounds back in the day. Oh, Overkill, when Overkill played for Mexico. Um, looks like they played with Death and Sadus as well. Pestilence. There's a poster here for Pestilence, Cannibal Corpse. So pretty much looks like when all the big players went to Mexico, they were the guys that supported them. So you, this is worth picking up, you know, just to get another... Thing. And what's really cool about this edition as well is that the um, the current lineup re recalled um, which two is it? Harrowing, Beheading, and Embryonic Mutilation. And um, yeah, completely different sound. I mean, the original album is quite, you know, of its time really. It's released in 1992. It's pretty basic death metal. Like I say, scorching sort of scathing vocals, really raw sounding. This, these new modern takes sound like sound like suffocation. You know, they sound really technical, really in in your face. It sounds like a like a critopsy or something like that. Like a modern, it sounds like a modern death metal band is covering one of these songs. Um, I'm not sure. It's, it's definitely a new take on it. Um, I reckon I need to hear a new album from them to sort of make my mind up fully. But yeah, two very cool editions of um, an underrated, underground, hidden gem in metal, really. Um, there was something I, something I wanted to say and I forgot it. Ah, that was it. Track number six. Awesome. When that kicks in. Uh, what's it? Harrowing beheading, yeah. When it kicks in, and when it kicks in, the scream is. And the drums, like, you know, it's fucking awesome. And yeah, really good production by Eric Meyer. I mean, as you well know with the channel, uh, I'm a massive Dark Angel fan. They're one of my favourite bands. Um, and. If you are new to the channel, if this is your first video, welcome aboard. But yeah, go back and look out my uh, Let's Talk About Dark Angel video and you'll see how much I love that band. So, was just really enjoying the album anyway. And then when I found out Eric, I kind of got a few Dark Angel vibes with it. And then, yeah, Eric Meyer produced the album and played some solos on it. It was like, well, there you go. So, it's kind of like a, a nice little addition to the Dark Angel collection because, you know... Gene Hogland aside, everyone else didn't do a lot outside Dark Angel. Um, so you grab onto anything you can uh, with a band like that. They only did like three stroke four albums. So it is a case of uh, quality over quantity. But yeah, let's um, have a look at this then, shall we? Uh, I got this from... I can't... <laughs> Azimuth Records, I think I pronounced that right. I'll put a uh, link to their Facebook page in the description. Um, still available, I think. If if the if this box set's not available, I think the cassette is. This was a limited edition. Um, here we go. Oh. 
awesome. I was just saying how much I love that artwork. And then on the back, I don't know whether or not to keep this, to be honest. But uh, ah, fuck it, I paid for it. It's mine. I'm gonna wear it. Uh, little flyer there. What else we got? Oh, we've got a black foam patch. That's cool. And then uh, looks like we've got a poster. Oh, awesome. Might have to... Uh, might go there, actually. If I can find a frame for that, I might frame that. So we've got a T-shirt. Poster. That's just amazing artwork as well. I love that front cover. Um, and a patch. And the album on cassette. There we go. I'll, uh, I'll take that out in a second. And, uh, yeah, let's put that. Let's put that on the back. Close that up. Put that down there. Pretty basic, to be honest, but that's all right. Old school looking. They don't all have to look all fancy like some of them do now. Okay. There you go. Yeah, black form. The, uh, the Rotten Ways of Human Misery. Definitely check it out. Like I say, if you're a fan of death, again, Leprosy Era, Scream Bloody Gore, if you're into the early obituary and uh, Dark Angel and you've not heard this, definitely, definitely check them out. And like I say, I'll, um, I'll put a link to the band's uh, Mital Archives page. I'll uh, put in a link down to um, Azimuth records and hopefully they've still got some left if you want to pick one up and yeah i think that's just about covering it i'll uh, see you probably friday when i'm back with maiden cast but like i say we've got we're gonna we've got um let's talk about alice alas coming up featuring the uh, eric rutan's uh gothic sort of operatic masterpiece and um, yeah, and when the Evil album turns up, I'll be reviewing that as well. So thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you all soon. Take care.